Hello. Have you ever wondered why we celebrate Pesach? Yes, I know it's Hashem took us out of Mitzrayim. But why did Hashem take us out and make us his special people? Is it because we were suffering? Aren't there other people who suffered? I think the answer is really important. We all know that there were people who were the grandparents and great-grandparents of Bnei Yisrael. Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Leah, who behaved in a way that brought glory to Hashem. They behaved in a way that helped bring Hashem's presence on this world. And Hashem had emuna, had a relationship with them that meant that when their grandchildren and their great-grandchildren would be suffering, Hashem will care about them and take care of them. This is such an important message for us. There are people who have done for us or our parents and we have to be responsible to live with Amuna, to care about them and help them. And of course, we need to have Amuna and Hashem, which means to be faithful to Hashem. Being faithful means that even when we don't necessarily see Him, we have that relationship with Hashem, that we care about His honor, His Torah, and His mitzvot. My hope and prayer for everyone is that as we get ready to celebrate Pesach with our families, we live with emuna, we live with faithfulness, just like Hashem took care of us many years after our avot and imahot lived in a way that was faithful to Hashem, so too may we each and every one of us live with emuna and live in a way that brings glory to Hashem, both in our mitzvot ben Adam l'chaveiro and in our mitzvot ben Adam l'makom. Have a chag sameach. Life is crazy these days. Usually, others made us close shoals, like during the Holocaust, the Crusades, pogroms, and shooters. This is something completely different, something new. We have to say to ourselves, clearly this is Hashem doing this. How can we strengthen our emunah, our faith in Hashem? We shouldn't feel that we are powerless. We sent a questionnaire to middle school students. They felt that during this time, we could increase our tefillah, connection with Hashem, chesed with our families, kindness, Torah learning, saying to Hillam, and overall our dedication to Hashem. Our goal at this assembly is to help each other focus on what you can learn and do to enhance your relationship with Hashem during this time. Hi guys, Mrs. Pepper asked me to re-record the shear, so I told her I don't have time. So she said maybe on Saturday night, but I still didn't have time. But now I find myself in the car again and I'm not driving. So I'm able to give you almost the same feel as the first time I spoke. I was saying that I heard a story from Rabbi Fischl Schachter, who quoted it from Rabbi Yechiel Spiro. And Rabbi Spiro tells the story that there was a man who worked as a barber. He uh, had a boss that owned the barber shop and he worked there. And he didn't make much money. Barbers don't make that much money. And his boss was very, very mean to him. And his wife always tried to encourage him to go find a new job or work somewhere else. And he said, look, it brings home some money. It's worth it. We're going to hold on to it. One day, this man, his name is Jake. One day, Jake is at the barber shop working. And he gives the guy a haircut. The man asks him, how much will that be? He says, $10. The man reaches into his pocket and he says, oh, I don't, ha I don't have any money on me. I forgot my wallet. And Jake says, that's okay. You can come back and pay whenever it works for you. And the boss looks at him and says, who do you think you are to determine who's going to pay and when they're going to pay? This is your store. This is my store. I'm up all night worrying about this place. I'm not making enough money. You're doing a miserable, lousy job. This isn't your place. This isn't your decision to make. He's yelling, screaming. He's red in the face. Jake is mortified. He opens up his own wallet, pulls out $10, and he puts it into the cash register. Hold and he says, Jake says, is that good now? The man walks outside and says, Jake, come on out here with me. He goes over to Jake and he says, how much do you think 
your boss would want for me to buy this barbershop? I don't know. Ask him. He asks him. He gives him a number. Comes back out. The man pulls a checkbook out of his car and he writes a check out for the price of the barbershop. And he tells Jake, hand this to your boss. Tell him the store's yours now. Rabbi Shechter said that we're finding ourselves locked up in a circumstance that we might not have planned for. And it could be that there are going to be people that are going to be yelling at us. And he advised us, he said, at some point, hold, you might find that you're sitting there doing your job and you're getting yelled at. And people are, people are, you know, they're, they're in a tough place and they're yelling. He says, be smart. Pull out that extra $10 and say, you know what? I'm going to be what I call the big boy. But if you're a girl, you could be a big girl. I'm going to be the big boy and I'm going to suck this up. And it could be that when you pay those $10, you're going to merit a much, much bigger gift from Hashem. We should all be Zohar to really, really be free, to be free on the inside, not just on the outside. And Hashem should accept all of our good deeds. We should be able to burn our chametz and eat our matzah and do all the mitzvahs properly. Have a chag kosher v'sameach.
message of Pesach, sitting at a Seder, eating bar, and later on the Afikomen, which is hidden but never gone, inspires us to continue our faith in Hashem. The Chol Dor Vador, Om Zimaleinu, May Kadosh Baruch Hu, Makileinu, Part of Amuna is learning what to be grateful for. We need to realize that everything we have is from Hashem and we need to be thankful for Hashem giving us everything that we have. When asked what's the biggest mistake we make in life, the Buddha replied, the biggest mistake is you think you have time. Time is free, but it's priceless. You can't own it, but you can use it. You can't keep it, but you can spend it. And once it's lost, you can never get it back. The average person lives 78 years. We spend 28.3 years of our life sleeping. That's almost a third of our life, but 30% of us struggle to sleep well. We spend 10.5 years of our life working, but over 50% of us want to leave our current jobs. Time is more valuable than money. You can get more money, but you can never get more time. We spend nine years on TV and social media. We spend six years doing chores. We spend four years eating and drinking. We spend three and a half years in education. We spend two and a half years grooming. We spend two and a half years shopping. We spend one and a half years in childcare and we spent 1.3 years commuting. That leaves us with nine years. How will we spend that time? Steve Jobs said, your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. So there's good news and there's bad news. The bad news is time flies. The good news is you're the pilot. Imagine you wake up every day with $86,400 in your bank account. And at the end of the night, it's all gone whether you spent it or not. And then the next day, you get another $86,400. What would we do with it? Every day, 86,400 seconds are deposited into your life account. At the end of the day, once they're all used up, you get a new 86,400 seconds. We would never waste it if it was money, so why do we waste it when it comes to time? Challenge yourself. Look around you. You have a house, family, food, internet, and so much more. These are things that many people don't have. Think about how you would feel if you didn't have these things. Dear my precious child, You say you have no time to pray and talk to me. I understand, so here's time. You say you have no time to get ready for Mashiach. I understand, so here's time. You say you have no time to work on yourself. I understand, so here's time. You say you are too busy to build a connection with your family. I understand, so here's the time. You say you want more time in your day to do things that actually matter. I completely understand, so here there's time. No distractions. I canceled work. I closed all of the stores. I literally shut down the world for you. Don't waste this time to binge watch, make TikToks, go on social media, eat, sleep, repeat. I'm giving you this time for you to work on you, for you to become the person you always wanted to be. Don't waste this time, my child. I shut down the entire world for you because I'll do anything for you. I love you and please don't waste this precious time. Use it to your advantage because I don't do this all the time. 